I wonder if the bats are gonna be on beds yet because that'll be fun if they are. What's going on everybody, welcome back. We're gonna be doing a little behind the scenes vlog today. We're kind of getting away from the typical fishing video. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my life outside of just fishing. So if you guys don't know, recently I started working for Catchco. So I essentially make YouTube videos for them as well as advertisements and things like that. So today I'm here at a local pond that I'm going to be filming an advertisement on. I'm not gonna show you guys, you know, me filming the actual advertisement, but while we're here, we're gonna be doing some other things. I have my girlfriend with me. She's never caught a bass before, so we're gonna actually try and get her her first largemouth. And then if you guys saw my video from a couple weeks ago, I put some bluegills in my roommate's fish tank. He was actually super ecstatic about it, so I wanted to add some fish to it, maybe a little bass. So this pond right here, I actually stocked years and years ago. I don't really fish it often, but it's one of my good friend's property. So we're gonna take a small bass out of there. We're gonna put it in the fish tank, maybe a couple more bluegill. So we're gonna be doing all kinds of fun stuff today. But this is what it's like in case you guys were curious to like see what behind the scenes of like the fishing industry is. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be filming an Instagram advertisement for Carl's Bait and Tackle. So I got a bunch of tackle here and you know, the concept of the advertisement is to just consider Carl's bait and tackle and again guys if you've never heard of it I know I talk about it all the time you really can save a ton of money with Carl's bait and tackle this is not an advertisement right now but if you do buy a ton of fishing tackle like me you can sign up with Carl's club and you guys save 30% on pretty much everything store wide which is super awesome and there's even tackle insurance so if you guys you know cast a really nice crankbait into a tree and get it stuck they'll actually send you a brand new one in replacement so there's a lot of cool benefits when you have Carl's club I got Rage here with me today. Baby, you gonna catch your first bass? Yeah, I sure hope so. You sure hope so? Do you see him? Put your glasses on. Come I here, did. look at this. I, saw small I can actually see. Yeah. yeah, there's not any giants in here. It's just a bunch of like cookie cutter one pounders and stuff like that. But there was a few swimming by shore. It is June and it is hot. The water temperature should be right there at spawning temp. So I'm really curious to see if these fish are gonna be on beds today. If they are, it's gonna make for some fun. But I'm gonna show you guys literally everything along the way. So I'm gonna film this advertisement and then we're gonna fish a little bit. All right, I lied. We were gonna film the advertisement right away, but I kind of want to see if I can get a fish out of our system real quick. All right, so I'm actually gonna throw this spinner bait here along the shore real quick. Spinner baits are great ways to just cover water, get on a quick bite, especially this time of year. Spinner baits, honestly, there's never a bad time to fish one. Spring, fall, summer, they always seem to cream one of these. So I'm actually trying out this bait. These just came out on Carl's Bait and Tackle. They're a new Terminator Pro Series spinner bait. It's got the dual willow blade. I'm gonna throw it out here. And I see a couple bass on the surface, so I just want to see if they're going to be fired up and want to just hit something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he swam right after it. Watch this. I bet you in the next two casts, he's going to smack it. I think that was a bass, unless it was a blue guy. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of little bass. Fish are weird, though. They don't often hit moving baits in this pond. Like, I might have to end up throwing on a Senko or having Rach fish a Senko, but... Take a couple wings down the shore, see if I can get one to eat it. I'm sure one is feeling it. It's also like 90 degrees and two o'clock in the afternoon, not the most ideal point of the day to be out here. But, all right, one more cast with the spinner bait and then we're gonna put on a Cinco. Film that advertisement and then you're gonna catch your first bass, babe, all right? They'll probably hit the, I put a Sakoshi bug on for her and they'll probably, oh, 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 did you see that? The big wave go towards it, they missed it. All right. So when we were down in Wisconsin recently, we were fishing the Sakoshi bug and just whacking the smallmouth. I'm gonna see if I can find some fish either on a bed or on shore. I don't really see any beds anywhere. Actually, I do. I do see beds. That looks like a bed right there. That looks like a bed right there. So these fish actually might be post-spawn. Not sure yet, but if you guys are bed fishing and you want an awesome bed fishing bait right here or just a good Ned rig bait, Sakoshi bug is where it's at. So I'm gonna throw this out here. I have a feeling it's just gonna get a ton of seaweed, but this kind of bait usually just gets fish fired up. This one's gonna eat it. Look at, he's looking at it. Watch, ready? 100% he's gonna eat it. Got him. Oh! Dang it. I think it might be on a bed. That bass might be on a bed. If it eats it again, it's on a bed. It doesn't look like it's on a bed, but he, he didn't move and he's he's guarding. Oh yeah, he's on a bed. Yep, that bass is teeth. What happens guys here, when fish are on beds, they're, they're not feeding. They're just getting super territorial. 
So I was wrong. I thought they were going to be posts, but but largemouth bass they spawn at all different times depending on the water temperatures. There's a pretty wide range. So what happened there was I stung him too. I set the hook, I missed him, and uh, he came back and ate it just because fish this time of year they're super territorial because they're guarding those eggs. So this is a male bass who was guarding fry, and he just smashed that bait because he's protecting the babies. So you can pretty much throw anything that resembles a bait fish in their nest and they will smack it. Boom, now watch, he's gonna swim right back to the bend. Oh, he's gonna go right to the same spot, see it? Whoop, right there. All right, I just, I figured I'd show you guys this real quick. So I'm actually taking off that Sakoshi bug. Great bed fishing bait, but it's not exactly what I want right now. So I'm trying to catch my girlfriend her first bass ever. The easiest way to get somebody on a fish that really doesn't know what they're doing or that's just very new to fishing, especially fishing lures, is to just grab a worm hook like this, straight shank, put this on your hook, and tip it with a Yanomoto Cinco. The Yanomoto Cinco is just a stick bait. Yum also makes the Yum Dinger. It's another great one. It's pretty hard not to catch a bass on this bait. You virtually don't have to do anything. You can straight up cast that bait out there, probably let it sit, and a bass will eat it. I'm gonna cut that off. If you guys wanna know how to rig it, you take this out like this, put it just through the tip like that, bring it all the way to the offset of that hook, turn the hook around, just barely stick it through. That's called a Texas rig. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this already, but if you are new to bass fishing and you're just watching this video because you came across it, this is gonna catch anybody their first bass when it's the summertime. I can almost guarantee it. Great, great bait to just catch a finicky fish or to just get on a good bite in general. All right, so we're gonna go film the advertisement. I'll pick you guys back up after while Rach catches her first of fish. So this is all it is, in case you guys are curious. I just set up the camera, we got a polarizer on it. Now I'm mic'd up. The audio probably sounds way different. We're gonna go down by the pond. I'm gonna film a quick little advertisement, but this is what it is. When you guys see me pop up on a uh, Instagram ad or a Facebook ad, tag me in it, send it to me. I wanna know if you guys are seeing it. Uh, but other than that, I literally just have a script on my phone, so I'm gonna go out there, film it, when I get home, I'm gonna get it edited and then I send it over to Catchco. I gotta film this thing, so I don't know. I just thought I'd show you guys a little bit what it's like. So a little bit different film setup, but not insanely different. I totally forgot I gotta catch a fish. I'm gonna be holding like a fish in the advertisement. So what we have here is a bucket. We just have like a normal Home Depot bucket and uh, we're gonna use this to just catch us a fish. I'm gonna use the bucket to hold the fish in water while I'm getting set up for filming, but let's fill this sucker up and then I'm gonna try and catch one real quick. That way we just got some water for the fish when it's chilling and I'm not set up yet. I'm not going to just hold a bass out of the water. I see a little large mouth right there. We're going to try and catch him. These these Cinco's are like bass candy. It's kind of ridiculous. It doesn't, I don't get it. I really don't, but they work great. So I wouldn't be surprised if like first cast I caught one. Trying to catch a fish like on raw film, like not wearing a GoPro is the hardest thing sometimes. I swear. It's like people think we catch a lot of fish because we make YouTube videos, but I usually have to go through hours and hours of GoPro footage. I'm pretty much running a camera the entire day. It's kind of insane. Oh, there's one right there. That's a nice one. That one's on a bed too. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Got him. All right, we got our fish for our advertisement. We're gonna get him in the bucket and uh, get this thing filmed. So when you guys snag that expensive bait in a tree, you don't gotta worry about it. Carl's has got you covered. Alrighty, hopefully at this point the wind isn't too loud. We got the advertisement all done. So now we're gonna fish. The goal right now is to put Rach on her first ever largemouth. Good news is most of these largemouth do seem to be on beds, or at least quite a few of them. So this should be pretty easy and it will be a cool experience for her because she actually gets to watch the fish eat the bait. I caught two pretty easily, but I'm gonna hook her up with a new Cinco and uh, we're just gonna fire at some beds, see if we can get a fish because when it's bed fishing season, like there's not many other options you can have. The easiest thing to do is walk the shoreline, find a large mouth and get her on one. So let's do that. Oh, I wasn't recording that whole time. So if you guys look right here, you see how the tail is all like bloody and fanned up and stuff like that. That is from spawning right there. That's how you know they're on beds, that's how you know they're doing their thing. All right, baby, put it right back on his bed. Just drop it right there, and it'll go right back to where you caught it at. Ooh. Good job. I'm sorry I didn't get it on film, but we'll get another one. We'll get another one. I didn't realize the camera wasn't recording. I'm like pointing it at her, and it was just like, nope. So, all right, 
they're definitely on beds. Like I said, this could be fun. So that that tail mark right there just goes to show everything for the spawn. So all right, baby, let's throw on the polarized glasses. I gave her a pair of Guggen Largy lookers. You gotta have the Largy lookers on to make sure you find those fish on the beds. Isn't that right? Makes a big difference, doesn't it? They're key. They're key, as she says. All right, babe, grab the rod. We're gonna hook you back up, and we're gonna catch you another one. And we're gonna get it on film here. See him right there? Sure, just catch. Just, just go ahead, babe. Wing it past it if you want. There you go. That was good. That was a little close, but bring it into his bed. Do you see it? Do you see the fish? There you go. You got it. There you go. There you go. See, it's a little, it's a little tough because they're on beds. It's different. It's not your traditional. Just manhandle them. Just get your finger in the in the mouth. Or yeah, you can do two hands. You can grab them behind the hand and then put your finger in the mouth. But grab them by the mouth because it like paralyzes them. There you go. Grab them tight. There you go. Good job. Got a bed fishing expert. <laughs> Yeah. See how he just came and smacked it when you put it right over his bed, though? He just, no yeah. questions asked. Boom. Good job. Hold that one up. That's going to be the last one of the day, huh? Yep. Yep, yep. Not I might blue go gill. around. Bluegill time, yep. See? Here, can I see if I can catch like one or two real quick? Just real fast? Okay. All right, guys, I just want to get one out of my system real quick, and then we're going to catch some fish for the fish tank. And then me and Rach, we actually got to run. We have to go to a cookout because it is a Saturday afternoon. So I just got to find that one. Oh, there's one right there. There we go. Oh, I lost sight of him. Where'd he go? Got it. Look at that. Bada bing, bada boom. The easiest way to catch bass, guys, is just to put on a stanko and get it out there. All right, buddy, you're being a little, little feisty guy. All right, well, the bait flew off, so bluegill fishing time. All righty, so we gotta get a few more bluegills for the fish tank. The, the other two that we got are doing really good, so we wanted to add some more in there. It's a 50 gallon fish tank. I'm not gonna load it up with fish, but we're gonna get a few more for there. Bluegills are just fun. If I can catch a really small bass, we're gonna do that as well, but the odds of me finding one that's small enough to put in a 50 gallon tank, don't know if it's gonna happen. So we switched over to night crawlers real quick. We gotta get some new ones. These ones are uh, quite warm and nasty. Ready? One, two, a three. Oh. 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 All right. There. I gave you a chance at life, and well, you didn't make it. So. In the bucket you go. Oh, 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 and one, two, three, slurp. Legals are so easy to catch, it's so funny. There? Yep. Get it, get it. it. Heck yeah! There it is. He's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but it'll work. All right, let's go get these guys in the fish tank and uh, if they're too big for this fish tank, for all you guys who are like, oh, these fish, uh, I have a buddy who just got a 220 gallon, so if it does not look comfortable in the fish tank that we have, we're going to go ahead and put them right in the 220 gallon, which, let me tell you, it's a plenty big tank for a fish that size. All right, we got to get these things home right now because I don't have an aerator, and, uh, you know, it's hot out, so we're like maybe 10 minutes away from my house, so... Let's go. This is the little behind the scenes of my life right now. I go make fishing videos and go out and then all my friends just sit in my backyard and they they drink beer. There you go. We got some new friends for, for the fish tank. Everybody's partying in the backyard. Oh, he's he's bigger than I thought. When you're at a big pond, the bass didn't it look like it was only like this big. Ah! Ah, all right, I'm gonna put him in there. Oh, he just swam right down to the bottom. He's like, what's going on? Where am I? Oh, oh. Yeah, they're gonna go a little nuts for a little bit. <laughs> Calm down, you'll be okay. And just so you guys know, this is a climate controlled tank, so the water temperatures are very, very close to the same. It's not like I'm just dropping them into cold water there very close to the same. They're gonna be a little weird. He's definitely a little big. We're gonna have to move him to the 200 gallon, but 
That's all right, he'll be okay for now. All right, stop. <laughs> this is gonna be randomly in the middle of the video. I thought it would be a good idea to put these fish in this tank. Not trying to make people mad. I personally do not feel right about having this large mouth in this tank, so I'm gonna pull it out right now, even though in the video you see me put it in, but I'm putting this part in. So right now, we're actually gonna take Buddy out of here. I'm gonna leave the bluegills in there. I'll be honest with you, bluegills are bluegills, whatever. I have like a soft spot for bass. This guy's too big. He's too big for here. The other bluegills, I mean, they're a good size. They can swim around. We have big chungus down there, but he'll be okay. He's going to get transported to a different tank and pond very soon. But that bass, it's got to go. It's just way too much. So I'm about to catch it with a butterfly net and go transport it back to the pond. But I just want you guys to see this now because at the end of this video, I put the bass in there and, uh, you know, literally not even 24 hours have gone by and I've just decided that it's got to come out. I don't like it in there. It's too big. All right, for all the haters in the comment section, he's going back to his home. So just ignore that I put that bass in that tank. All right, back to the video. So we're gonna end this video here. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I showed you a little bit behind the scenes of what I do on the weekends. And uh, you know, we caught my girlfriend her first bass ever. So what do you guys say about that? It was great. It was great. These are key, remember? Oh, never Those mind. Are the wrong ones. <laughs> she's, she's talking about these ones. But I'm going to get copyrighted on the music right now because my friends are blasting music. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you're new here, and we will see you next time.